afternoon. Today, as the Tuskegee National Alumni Association launches its 14th biennial convention, Into Flight, we do so in this historic mode. It is fitting that we commence the association's 125th celebration by returning to Mother Tuskegee and revisiting, as we have done so far this morning, the surrounding historical legacy of this great university. The history of Tuskegee Normal School, as Jimmy taught us, and then Tuskegee Institute, and now Tuskegee University, is greatly enhanced by the profound and enduring history of the Tuskegee Airmen. Let's hear it right now for the Tuskegee Airmen. Moulton Field was named, of course, after the second president of Tuskegee University, and you know who that was, Dr. Uh, Moulton. And it was the training site, this training site where we are at this very moment, that changed the course of history in aviation. The story of fight and flight. Notice I said fight and flight of the Tuskegee Airmen is one of the most renowned stories. And it is a story, ladies and gentlemen, that should be told to every generation. If you have children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-great-great-great-great-grandchildren, mm -hmm. tell them the story yes. of the Tuskegee Airmen. Yes. The Tuskegee National Alumni Association is indeed elated today to recognize and honor two distinguished and living, hallelujah, living legends whose names are synonymous with excellence in flying. Lieutenant Colonel Herbert E. Carter, who is retired, and his beautiful wife, Mrs. Mildred H. Carter. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Carter is an original Tuskegee Airman. Yes. Right. An original. 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 No less older. An original. And Mrs. Mildred H. Carter is one of the earliest of black yeah. female pilots. <laughs> Thus, the occasion offers the returning Tuskegee alumni the unique opportunity to give honor to whom honor is due. Let's hear it for you. Tuskegee High School as it was at that time. Tuskegee High School, before it was named Tuskegee Institute High School, back in 1941. <laughs> he joined the United States Air Force in uh, 1942, and he began his 26 as one of the original members of the 99th Fighter Squadron, whatever that is, Colonel, <laughs> known as the Tuskegee Airmen. He 
flew 77 combats against the German and it an Italian Air Force in Northern Africa. He touched ground. His, his squadron achieved the outstanding record in close tactical ground support. Whatever that is, of the Allied Army. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Sounds like a winner to me. And proudly, proudly, he is an alumnus of Tuskegee, then Tuskegee Institute. Let's hear it for our go on and on and on, but ladies and gentlemen, the important thing is, and this is so beautiful, is that Colonel Carter, he would have been in Texas now, because the uh, Tuskegee Airmen are meeting in Texas, but he's with us today. Aww. Texas, we love you. <laughs> At this time, I'm going to ask Mrs. Uh, Lily Lanier, the immediate past president, if she would join the president in presenting the plaque. You to know, I just want to say that it is an honor and blessing uh, for me, and I'm sure for everyone else, to just be in the room at this moment. Yeah. I, you know, it's so sad that um, so many people are missing this opportunity because I tell you, I take it as a sincere blessing that I'm in the presence of you both, okay? Yes. Yes. I, how, how lucky am I to say, I'll be able, when I get, hopefully get your age, I can say, I was in the room, yes. okay? Yes. I was present yes. and alive in a tent, you know, yes. of what was going on. So thank you for being here with us, thank you. We are uh, honoring uh, Colonel, uh, Colonel uh, Carter today for uh, just his diligence, and uh, perseverance over everything. We, we have this plaque that says, Tuskegee National Alumni Association, presented to Return Lieutenant Colonel Herbert E. Carter, Sr., distinguished Tuskegee Airmen for service to community and alma mater, 14th Biennial Convention, Tuskegee, Alabama, July 29th, Oh, yeah, this is history. Yeah. You might wonder, well, why did I invite Mrs. Carter? Well, naturally, she's the spouse of Lieutenant oh, Carter. Yeah. Carter. However, she holds her own rank <laughs> in aviation. <laughs> Mrs. Mildred A. Carter dates her aviation uh, experience, and her aviation is one that has been hidden. Most, most of you did not know what I just told you about Mrs. Carter, did you? Did you? All right, teacher, all once a teacher, always a teacher. She is also a Tuskegee graduate and joins the rank of Tuskegee alumni. When the Army Air Corps announced that it was recruiting female pilots, in the Women's Air Service Program, WASP. Miss Carter was more than qualified for the venture. However, she was informed that she was ineligible because the program was not accepting at that time Negro women. Right? History, however, she was among the first one women to earn a pilot's license from Tuskegee Institute Civilian Air Training School, which became the legendary, with success, of the Tuskegee Airmen of World War II. among the famed airmen for her realization of a dream of wings. She always wanted to fly. And today, we have a live, beautiful, 
female pilot in our midst. I don't know who the, I don't know who the fastest flying is. You heard of him. Or Mrs. Carter. I have a feeling she might be able to outspeed him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Mrs. Mildred H. Carter. The Carters were here during the period of time that the war was going on. She flew a Piper Cub, she flew military. They were caught 10,000 feet up there. That's the Carters. <laughs> Let's hear it again. Thank you very much, Dr. Harrington. <coughs> I tell students quite often, the only reason Booker T beat me here, he came in a horse and buggy and I walked. <laughs> <laughs> from Mississippi. <laughs> but I came here in ninth grade and then of course I got my master's at Tuskegee. Wow. How many of you entered Tuskegee between 1970 and 1985? Oh, I admitted all of you. <laughs> Guilty. 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 I would also dare ask how many ROTC graduates do we have? All right. Uh, <laughs> of I, I served two ROTC terms at Tuskegee. Tuskegee is home to us. Mildred and I were both students here, as most of you know by now. I went military and she went motherhood and <laughs> She tells everybody that she was always a better pilot, just didn't, didn't fly the fastest aircraft. <laughs> but I, I, I want to say this, it has always been since my returning here in 1965, from the cold weather of Limestone, Maine, that uh, Tuskegee has been home for us. I'm 91 now, going on 100. And when you're back here for your 135th anniversary, I want to meet you out here because I'm going to still be here. Mildred and I finished our courtship over Lake Martin. <laughs> when I went in as a cadet, I had one open post between January and July. That was Easter Sunday morning. They let us come to the campus for sunrise service. Otherwise, I never left Tuskegee Army Airfield. My commission was five months instead of 11. So you see, we were busy from first light to last light. But I would call her up and say, what are you doing this weekend? She says, well, I'm going to be flying. And we're flying off of Kennedy Field. That's over on Highway 29. Moat Field had not been built. I said, well, I'll meet you at Mod Lake Carlisle Bridge. <laughs> and I would there at the field. I'd talk to one of the mechanics and operations type out on aircraft and guys if I got it tested or something. And I'd take off and when I'd get over to Lake Martin, I'd see this cub put putting along <laughs> bright yellow. So one over another hanger. I'd pull down, my radio couldn't contact her, so I'd sit there in formation and I'd wave and she was waving. <laughs> I'd throw a few she'd throw a few and uh, 
being typical me, uh, finally, I would wave a goodbye and pull off like I was going back to yeah. Tuskegee Young Air Base. But I would just keep turning and going around <laughs> and come up behind her. And then I'd go on and pull up in front. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd look back and I'd see this little cub going. <laughs> That evening, I'd call and speak to her sister Catherine, and uh, there'd be a silence, and Catherine would come back and say, she doesn't want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> but I overcame that, and we <laughs> married. We, on the 21st of August, mm. we'll celebrate our 68th year. <laughs> I made a good wing man. <laughs> our life has been wonderful. We have three kids. We've enjoyed being here at Tuskegee these years. I spend still a lot of time on the road, talking to militaries all over the world, from Japan to Germany to Italy. I've even been back to Kuwait. And uh, military just has not ended for me, and I don't intend for it. All right, but the most wonderful thing is being here at Tuskegee and seeing uh, the first time we old airmen say, from these beginnings, mm -hmm. yes. when we look at Hangar 1 and 2, yes. this was the nest mm -hmm. from which these airmen grew and on their wings. And to now have it at his historical site means everything in the world to all of us. Mm -hmm. yes. We're so happy that you're making a part of your career. And uh, I get diarrhea of the mouth sometimes. So, <laughs> uh, I'm going to say for Mildred that we were happy that Dr. Harrington did ask us to be with you this morning. I know the boys out in Texas are talking about me right now. Yeah, no, they know about it. Yes. Yes. But they always did talk about it because I was not only a pilot, but I was the aircraft maintenance officer. Wow. And any excuse that they could get as to why their mission was not successful was always maintenance fault. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to come back for them all the time. Okay. I said, pilots without maintainers mm. or just glorified civilians with dark glasses and a cool leather cap. Mrs. Carter, would you please greet us in your own way? <laughs> Hello everybody from Tuscany. Hello. 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 I want to tell you this is a wonderful occasion and it's so great to look out and see so many friendly faces all smiling at me. <laughs> uh, I really feel like I'm part of the Tuskegee alumni now. Sometimes I haven't always felt that way <laughs> because I walk into a group and though I might remember some faces I don't remember names, and I, but I say, now, I know her, you know. <laughs> but if you ask me, do you, do you know who I am? I'll say, no, who are you? <laughs> He'll always say yes and can remember something that I don't remember. But now, to, today he said that he tried to get in touch with me when we were in the air by uh, radio. What he forgot was there were no, radi or no radios in the Piper Club at that time. <laughs> <laughs> now, that was 1941. Where were you all when I was flying? <laughs>
You think I might have the answer to, please ask me. By what? By your pilot training. Oh, well, I had a wonderful instructor. Of course, Chief Anderson was over all of the instructors and the students and everything. And he was a close friend of mine and always said, uh, Mill, you want to fly? And I always said, yes. I didn't know where he was going or uh, when, but he'd come out and pick me up and we'd come out here and take off in one of his airplanes. <coughs> Maybe we were just going down to Mobile because he said he felt like having some shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Up here, and then I see a hand back there. Uh, Carolyn, uh, what class? They had number class. Which class was, were you in? I was in 42 F, fourth class. 42 F. Yes. Yeah. And Thank I you. was waiting for him. <laughs> <laughs> he hadn't gotten his wings. I wasn't going to marry him. <laughs> Not exactly. Uh, there were other women who got their license here. Mildred Hansen, do you all remember her? She finished Tuskegee also. And uh, she worked out here as a secretary and she learned to fly and got her license, I think. I don't think. Really. Uh, I'd like to know, what were, how were you received uh, as a woman uh, in aviation? And such a pioneer, mm -hmm. uh, especially by the men. Okay, when, <laughs> when I applied, most of my classmates were applying also, and I just thought, well, all these boys think they're going to go out there and fly. I'm going to put my application in too, which I did. Was not accepted at first. This person is two weeks too young. My birthday was on the. 14th of September, and you had to be 18 by the 1st of September. And uh, so I applied again when I became 18. This time it was accepted. And I was treated very well, in fact, encouraged by all the other guys who were trying to get their licenses and going to night school and everything. And uh, they helped me as much as they could along the way. And it was a wonderful experience. I don't know what happened to them or where they are now. Most of them went into the military, but of course they weren't taking any women in. And let me tell you about the WASP. They did say, you're not eligible because we have no place for colored women. We were colored women then. I think Dr. Harrington said, Negro. I said Negro. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you, but you're right. I know you're right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yes. All right, here's, here's a question here from Sean. I got a question for you, uh, Lieutenant Carter. So, the, the movie Tuskegee Airmen, um, you know, they, it was an adaptation of the Tuskegee Airmen experience. How much of that was actual and how much of it was dramatization? If you've seen the movie, you know, the one with Lawrence Fishburne and yeah. Malcolm Jamal Warner and all those guys. Several times. <laughs> uh, quite a bit of it was uh, pigmentation of imagination. Uh, so many. I picked, picked it to pieces, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. For the average person, such things as Mrs. Roosevelt flying with the uh, cadet was not true. She flew with Chief Anderson. Mm -hmm. okay. Mildred would know. We saw a picture over in the other hangar with Mildred talking to Mrs. Roosevelt mm -hmm. on that day. Uh, the, there was never an airman that killed himself by flying that aircraft in the hangar. All right. You know we love life, man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then, of course, as a pilot and maintenance officer, I just picked here and there, and it was fully done. And what you need to do, George Lucas is making, finishing up a film now. You will see a real 
movie mm -hmm. of the Tuskegee Airmen. Is that the Red, the red Tail? Good. And you will see the true story. The true story. My name is Gene Cummins and Colonel Carter. I'd like to uh, congratulate on you for using all your faculties because you don't seem to be liking anything. <laughs> 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 I love uh, I like to know, uh, based upon what I've heard now, and I'd like for you to either validate it or not, that the Tuskegee Airmen. You had a lot of people qualified to become airmen, but they were not commissioned, so to speak. Could you address that issue? Because I understand you had a quarter on who could get commissioned. Is that correct? Well, first, the basic requirement, you had to have at least two years of college. You had to be able to pass the rigid physical, 20 to 20 eyesight, no color blindness, and depth perception, etc. The physical was the hardest part to pass, especially when it came to the weight, height, what have you. Coordination maneuverability was the other. Uh, at first, you either could be a fighter pilot or you could be nothing. Where in the other part of the Air Corps, if you washed out single engine, you could go for twin engine. You could go for navigator, bombardier, a gunner. But at Tuskegee or Mayfield, if you washed out as a single engine pilot, you became a private. <coughs> Until 1944, when they introduced the B-25, and they had twin engine <coughs> aircraft, and you then could be a co-pilot, navigator, bombardier. The requirements were very rigid. The attrition rate was about 50%. It was high, very high. Therefore, uh, the saying is, they are a crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they were the cream of the crowd, mm -hmm. physically, mentally, and in their ability to operate complicated equipment. Mm -hmm. And that's part of why that 332nd was such a wonderful outfit. It had most of the men in there were college graduates. Mm -hmm. And it had, and that goes for the mechanics. Mm -hmm. So uh, it uh, was just activated to succeed. Mm -hmm. And it did. All right. Did I what? Transporting airplanes to bases? No, I tried to join the WASP. That's what they were doing. But I couldn't be a WASP. Okay. <laughs> so I got in the mail the other day a, a, a gold medal from that organization They are now giving them to the WASP and recognizing their service. And they sent me one saying that I deserved it. Thank you. And this is Carter. I want you to know that you have. I said I wasn't going to do it. But when miracles happen like this, Mrs. Carter, you have to give way to your emotions. I want to say thank you on behalf of this Tuskegee Alumni Association. I'm going to let the president bring some closing remarks. But your son, where is your son? Oh. Hello, darling, stand up. Is he standing? That's my right hand, Colonel. That's my right hand. That's my right hand. Listen, Madam President, I wonder if you would give some closing remarks, and then we're going to treat you with the Tuskegee song for coming out and joining us, especially uh, for staying back from the Tuskegee Airmen. <laughs> Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, we so dearly appreciate it, oh, and uh, as you can see from the smiles and how we could have kept you here all night, <laughs> we thank you, thank oh, you, and thank you everybody for coming out. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Yeah. Yeah. If I could be so, you could so, we can take a time to give Elaine a hand because she did a It is really important to have good volunteers on your team, and Elaine has stepped up to the table more than once, so thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Tuskegee song.
National Heart Surgery. <laughs> they came through for me as never before. The staff, the, 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 the main staff is in Texas, and Miss Christine called all the way out to Texas and said, Dr. Harrington is having a heart attack. <laughs> and they said, open up the second hangar. <laughs> <laughs>